Okay, if you open your book to page 57, I'm going to just take the problem straight out of the book and go through the steps there. And we're going to add those steps to our uh, notebook. Just a reminder, why do we make these notebooks? When you get to Algebra 2, your high school teachers will expect you to remember everything from Algebra 1. Do brains really remember that much? This is a way for you to access that information. Um, one of your classmates in sixth period has a sister at the high school who said I saw her using her notebook during her homework the other day. Just FYI. It will be useful later, trust me. Why are we copying down the steps that are in the textbook? Because you're not going to have this textbook in two years when you're taking Algebra 2, right? But you will have access to what? Your own notebook. So let's write the equation that we see on page 57 in graphing a linear equation. Y equals 4 fifths X plus 2. Step 1. What does it say right there in the book? Identify the Y intercept in the equation. Yep. We want to identify the y-intercept. What is the y-intercept of this equation? Okay, it's right in your book on page 57 as well. And you should have this equation written in your book. What is our y-intercept, everybody? Two. What kind of two? Positive two. That's important because there's going to be multiple twos on the graph, aren't there? So our B is, is 2, or positive 2. That means that the y-intercept is 2. Over here, I want you to make a graph. Now, our step one in the book does not say to then plot it. It says identify it, but we're going to put an and. Put that point on the graph. What we will talk about repeatedly in Algebra 1 this year is, in order to graph an equation, you need two lines. You can connect two lines on a graph and make the graph of that line. So here's our first one. And then our step two from our book says, use a slope to plot a second point. I like to say find a second point. What is our slope here? Four fifths. It's four over five. Don't say fifths because this is rise over run. When we're talking fifths, that's a fraction and that's part of a whole. And if we're talking about fifths, we're talking about something that's broken up into five parts, yes? This is rise over run. It's the difference in y over the difference in x. So this isn't 4 fifths, it's 4 over 5. There's a difference in the way we're saying that. Do you guys hear it? Mm -hmm. We're going to rise up how many? 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to run across how many? Oh my gosh, we've been doing this for a week, you guys. What's our rise? What's our run? This is our rise. This is our So we're going to rise up how many? And we're going to run across how many? Thank you. And you're going to plot that point. Step three. Draw the graph through the two points. And I'm using my shorthand version of through that I know is not correct. Okay. 
you're not just connecting the dots. A graph mm -hmm. line goes on and on and on in the coordinate plane. So you're going to connect those dots and also draw through them to show that is your line. Now I want to be really clear up on this. We are now moving to the paper that you were given. I want you to draw a graph on it. Whenever you draw a coordinate plane for me, I'm going to expect to see those arrows on every single Y and X axis. Those are showing that those lines of those axes go on and on and on. I would like you to graph the equation y is equal to negative 3 fourths x minus 5. What is our step one? Identify the y-intercept. Denise, what is our y-intercept in this equation? Negative what? Five. Negative five. I don't know if I made my line long enough. One, two, three, four. It's actually down here. Five. What does our second direction say, Patrick? Okay, use the slope to find the second. What is our slope here? Four. First, it's got what in front of it? Negative. So our line is going to go what direction? This direction, right? And then our rise is? Three. And what does our run? Four. So we're going to rise up three. One, two, three. And I want you to picture a negative line. If I go to the right, what kind of line is that going to make? If I go to the left, what kind of line am I going to make? Negative. And step three, draw a line through both points. I'm hoping at this point you feel like you can try this, but you know you need practice at it. What do you mean now? Where are you lost? Do you know what this negative five is? Where did it show up on the graph? How did I get this point? How? I use this right here. Negative 3 over 4 gave me my slope. Here's my 3. That's positive. I went up. True? But I have a negative slope, so I can't go to the right as well because that would also be positive. I have a negative slope, so I have to go to the left. How much? So again, I'm hoping you guys feel like, and we're going to do some practice in a few minutes, that you could practice this now. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're going to have this paper to do the practice on. So tuck it with your binder paper, and we're going to go back to our notebooks. Draw a line. We're going to label this part slope formula. When I saw you on Tuesday and we did the, the notes with this graphic organizer, I talked about when we find slope from a table that there's another way of doing it that uses two coordinate pairs. 
and that we would talk about it later, what well, we're going to talk about it now. It's a slope formula. When I first learned this, I hated it because it looks really confusing, but it's not really confusing. I'm going to write it for you, and I want you to write it down exactly as I'm writing it. M, what is our M equal to? It's our slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. That's when I was like done. I am going to show you it is not that hard to use. Please write it down because I want you to have it in your notes. You can't see it? Yeah. Okay, it's m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. All this really means is that m is equal to the change in y over the change in x. What do you guys see in the middle here? A change. Subtraction. Can I find the difference or a change in something by subtracting them? That's all the formula means. Go ahead and look at your from the table the other day. Remember when we did the arrows, like we looped them, and we talked about the change between the different x's and then the different y's? The formula is just a way to do it when you only have two points and you don't have to draw a table. So here is an example from the book, and if you want to turn the page, it's on page 58. If we have ordered pair negative 1 comma negative 2 and 3 comma 4. This is my x and this is my what? Yeah. And this is my x and this is my... Oh. All this crazy looking formula is saying is whichever y is on the top here, it has to be over the x from its same pair. Mm -hmm. so it looks really confusing, but it's not. So if I'm taking this and I say negative 2 over negative 1, that's saying this y is over its own x. So that's right. This y is over this x. And then the formula has what in the middle? Uh, subtraction. So I have to put subtraction here. And then I'm going to put this y over this x. Like, so is this like a the wow. tables we were doing? Just like um, Honestly, when you I was showing you guys on that worksheet the table the other day, I did not set up tables. I used this formula to find these answers. It was, a, it was like two less steps. Now, I'm going to subtract negative 2 minus 4, and I'm going to get what? Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. And that gives me negative over negative is positive, and 6 over 4 reduces to 3 over 2. Nobody can see because I went off camera. Thanks for letting me know. Now, here's the thing. I think back often on why I did not understand algebra the first time I took it, besides the fact that I had a teacher who did not believe girls were good at math. And he told me that. Not, he didn't say all girls. He said a lot of girls aren't good at this. As he patted my shoulder this one. I still remember it clearly. I also learned algebra, or I didn't learn it that two years, in a, in a town in California with a nuclear laboratory. 
There were major scientists who lived in my town. My best friend in high school's mother patented a laser she created. Laser. Okay, so not only was I going to school with people whose parents went to Harvard and MIT and studied science, their teachers knew they were teaching kids of parents who probably had better math degrees than they did. And I don't think about that very often because I think about my own frustration as a math student. But as a teacher, that could be kind of intimidating to think about the parents who might come to conferences and question you, like, why are you teaching my kid like this? You know what I mean? <laughs> So when my teacher showed me this, I was told that the second X pair had to always go first, uh, not X pair, X, Y pair, the second coordinate pair had to be the first one on here because this said two. So it has to be the second pair. And I'll tell you in a minute. And this is the first pair and this says sub one, so it has to go there. Did I set it up that way? No. I just went with the first one and said x over y, x over y, because that makes sense to my brain. We think left to right. We live in a culture where we read from left to right, mm -hmm. okay? But I'm gonna prove to you that it can be done either way, and my teacher was just trying to follow specific rules so he didn't tick off parents that maybe had degrees from MIT. Let's redo this. We'll use this empty space up here. We're gonna start with the second pair because this says y2 and y1, right? Let's do 4 over 3 minus, because that's the formula, right? Is this x over its own y? Or y over its own x? <coughs> or I'm just backwards. Is y over its own x? Yeah. So this xy pair is now here. The formula has subtraction because it's a change, which is a difference. These are both negative, though. So what's going to happen when I put these numbers into this? They're going to become positive. Two, one. What's four plus two? Six. What's three plus one? Four. And six over four reduces to three over two. Did we end up the same? Yes. It does not matter which coordinate pair goes first or second. What matters is that your xy pair has to be above and below itself in the equation, and it doesn't matter which you put first or second. So with that, I'm going to stop talking because we have 19 minutes of class left, and I'm going to go back to the binder paper you guys started with and give you some more practice problems to try before tomorrow. I would like us tomorrow to be prepared to talk about this worksheet from Tuesday. Any questions you have coming into it, and I want you to look at it again tonight based on today's work. And then we're gonna go back to page 61. And I want you guys to do numbers 18 through 23. Can we stop the whistling please? Oops, because I can't write. I'm gonna start that again. Numbers 18 to 23. We already had the graphing 24 to 27. And then I want you just to try 28 to 31. It's 14 problems. You've already done some of them. If you need to make graphs, you're gonna do it on this paper and they're gonna get stapled together. And we have 18 minutes for work time now.